spilling the tea on a good read. Today we're going to be discussing two titles. I will be discussing Kindred by Octavia Butler. And I will discuss A Father's Sacrifice, Daddy's Girl by Ben Burgess Jr. All right, let's get into it. So Kindred um, is a story that's set in 1976 and 1815 in the antebellum South. There are three main characters, Dana, Kevin, and Rufus. Dana eventually, um, well, Dana ends up going back in time to the antebellum South. She feels warm and faint. She falls out and literally gets shunted back to 1815. Um, the first, each time she goes back, the main character during that time is Rufus. He is, starts off as a little boy, then he ends up as an adult slave owner. But each time that Dana is shunted or called back to the South, she feels warm and, and she faints and Rufus is in some type of dilemma. The first time he is drowning and he is a young boy, maybe about four or five years old. Um, she's only there for a little while, but when she comes back, she's wet and muddy and her husband is like, what happened? Where did you go? So she's kind of quiet about it at first because it's really an odd experience, but then she realizes that um, it happened again. When it happens again, um, she has that same feeling and then Kevin realized that, hey, he grabbed on to her because he was trying to figure out what was going on and they both end up going back. So you're dealing with the theme of um, him being a white man in the antebellum South and he is married to Dana, but they cannot reveal that information, of course, so there would be cruel consequences. So is it kind of like an out of body experience? It, it kind of is because when, as they go back and forth between um, current times and then the past, they have to deal with different dynamics of the, the world situation. You know, there was slavery where they go back to and then they come back to reality or to current times and then they have to figure out what's going on. Um, Dana, it also, the story is written in six parts, uh, but she, during the time that she travels back, she meets some of her ancestors or finds out that the reason she is going back is to kind of change what happens in her future. But it, the story is a great story. Um, it deals with the dynamics of the antebellum slavery and the sensibility of the late 20, a late 20th century black woman. So it does not disappoint. The action is good. Um, it's, it's historical fiction. It's also science fiction. And um, it's just, it does, it does not disappoint and you will enjoy it. So come and check out Octavia Butler's Kindred. Okay, what was your favorite part? My favorite part is when Kevin, her husband, realized that he would have to be an abolitionist because he, the feelings of how, because he was married to a black woman, okay. and the fact that he had to deal with those feelings and how his wife's people were being treated, he had to find a place for himself okay. during that time. Okay, so I'll talk to you about a father's sacrifice. This is a fiction book. And it's mainly about how a father had to mature within everything that was going on in his life. One of the main characters was Nick. Nick was this immature, um, irresponsible playboy. All in, all in the fun of being the latest man, he found himself caught up in a love triangle that changed his life forever. And Scott was Nick's older brother Scott was always the one that was cleaning up Nick's mistakes. And they had a younger brother also that Scott was responsible for cleaning up his mistakes. Um, his brother was more of the level-headed one of the three brothers. But he kept his promise to their deceased father that he would take care of them. So he would always bail them out of whatever they were in or clean up their mistakes. Also, um, 
Chance was the youngest of the brothers. Chance was struggling with addiction. He was addicted to heroin and it caused him to do some pretty bad things to the family. Um, but he was still struggling with trying to um, kick the heroin addiction. Also Rhea, Rhea's a Scott wife and she was a strong woman. She survived two miscarriages. Her and Scott wanted a child so bad, but they were unable to have one. But they were blessed with one through Nick. And she was a surrogate mother to Nick's daughter, Lynn. And she had come out with a lot of things that he needed help with for as showing Lynn all of the female aspects of life. And Lynn is Nick's daughter. Lynn, she endured a lot of uh, bullying in school, growing up and everything, because she was biracial. She was confused about which race she wanted to be. Kids made her feel so bad in school or whatever. But she also, she finally found love and happiness um, at the end of the race. So reading this book, it really helped me understand some characteristics and, um, of male and females. Um, it was also, it's a good book for, um, to discover different relationships and understand different relationships. The different dynamics relationships. of different relationships, yes, yes. how they work. Yes, and how it just highlights a lot of type of different relationships. This book is about 424 pages, but it's worth it reading every page of it so your favorite part you would, my favorite part was that nick finally found love and happiness but the surprising part is who he found it with in the end so why was lean a sacrifice for nick we will have to read the book to find out all right well we'll see you next time on spilling the tea on, on a, a good, good read, read.